Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975. Welcome to another ZX Spectrum vs Commodore 64 comparison video, or as I like to call it, Playground Wars. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this game, The Way of the Tiger, released by Gremlin Graphics in 1986. And I think by all means correct me if I'm wrong, it's based on a series of books, um, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And there was a sequel to it called um, Avenger. So basically, I guess Gremlin wanted a slice of the way of the exploding fist action, which I have a comparison of on ZX Spectrum versus Commodore 64, which is basically the best fighting game on the Spectrum. Groundbreaking, revolutionary, uh, and still to this day, graphically very, very impressive on both systems. And a huge hit. So they obviously thought they'd go a different route. And what uh, the way of the Tiger is, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with three different disciplines. You have this, which is unarmed combat. Uh, you're basically a ninja, in case you haven't realised, by the gym jams. Uh, then you have sword fighting and pole fighting. It was a 48k game only on the Spectrum. The version I'll be playing on the Commodore, thanks to my C64 Mini, is the cartridge version. So no multi-loading for me. And also it was released on the Amstrad. So I've never played the Commodore before. I don't know if the Amstrad is a port of the Spectrum. Um, and I, I'm assuming the Commodore is a game entirely of its own making. As you can see here from the demo, it's a little bit different because it is essentially side-scrolling, but it still has one-on-one -on -one elements, and it got really, really good reviews. <clears throat> Excuse me, side-scrolling elements give me a gacky throat. Um, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it got really good reviews. But it's it's kind of it's a little different. The more I play it, you'll you'll see what I mean. So anyway, 48k sound effects means. Uh, well, very poor music, which you've heard, uh, and no background noise. Well, sorry, no uh, proper in-game um, you know, music, so you will hear background noise, otherwise known as a road. So we played this back in the day, and I really rather quite liked it. This is a tap file, so all three levels, which would be you know, independently loaded on the 48K, um, are loaded into one file, so there is key pressing. But I love tap files, although TZX files have a certain charm as well. Gonna have to play it with joystick because I don't know what the controls are on the keyboard and it won't let me um, select them. So, which is 986, Gremlin Graphics, poor show. And what, seriously? I'm assuming I have to press space. Which is the key I constantly break on my keyboard. Incredibly professional, I know. So, right, let's get into this, and by that I mean reset. Boom, right, so, play with joystick. Now you've got one play the whole game, two on combat, three practice, and four practice sword. I'm not sure how it loads in the actual real one, um, the whole game in, or when you try to play the whole game, but we'll go with two. There you go, see it's a tap file. I love tap files. Uh, prepare yourself student for unarmed combat. Yeah, it's got really really good reviews and the box art was fantastic It was basically a massive tiger uh, with a ninja standing in its mouth That's the extent of the music. It's a 48k beeper game right there I am now look at the levels of parallax for one thing and You can moonwalk moonwalking ninjas are awesome stuff. So look check it out. I mean come on uh, other than the exploit way the exploding fist I would say this is probably the uh, you know second most graphically impressive fighting game and not just because of the animation on the character But because of you know the parallax and stuff which wasn't in where the exploding fist my doppelganger just jumped in from the background there hold down far press forward That's not far Got your side kick flying kick up and far I don't think you got block In your face. Now, you can see, I believe my health is on the left. I want to do the high kick. You can never do these things when you want to do them. There you go. Oh, yeah, you got to turn around, which is useful. So it's nice, frantic is worth the exploding fist. And, obviously, we've got more health. But endurance is you're out and out 
endurance and I guess inner force is how powerful your moves are so whether or not by all means correct me if I'm wrong I haven't played this in years whether or not you know that depletes the more you get twatted I don't know there are like spirits and shit and dwarfs and well death <laughs> as well look at this synchronized river dance see come on look at the pillars in front of the uh I don't know what that is but whatever it is it looks good turn around <clears throat> So obviously when I say endurance, mine would be red. Turn around. I told you it was useful. His would be green. I don't know. Like I said, it's been ages. I just want to show you how graphically lovely this is. There's that other one where you fight with staff, which I got a gameplay of, but for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. Right, so. There you go. I don't even know if I'm hitting him. So he's not your traditional... Okay, you know, side-scrolling fighting game. I'm wondering if this is, if it is in fact based on the books, something to do with them. Look, death just touches me. Um, and it takes my health. Also, there's something very satisfying about flying kicking death in the face. Oh, shin kick. Forgot all about that. To be fair, though, I don't think he's got any shins. And we've only got one bloody attack. So yeah, it's unique, shall we say, amongst fighters. Its sequel um, basically cashed in on the, you know, the, the success of the gauntlet, you know, uh, sort of, well, not fad, but popularity, which is ironic because Gremlin Graphics programmed gauntlet on the spectrum, even though it was uh, released by US Gold. De who knew? Death is quite the bastard. Best depiction of death in any movie whatsoever. And it's a kid's movie. Baron Munchausen. Seriously, look it up. Hey, does this mean everyone is now immortal? Okay. Look at the animation. It's superb. And obviously it's monochrome. I mean, we have a blue sky. But the way it does it, it just, it just looks lovely. All right, death again. So, there you go. Don't want to be stupidly long. But this is uh, unarmed combat. Uh, you know, discipline one on the ZX Spectrum. Let's have a look at Discipline 2. Right, let's go. Number 3, practice pole fighting. This is the one I always struggle the most as a kid because you're fighting with a pole on a log over a river. And if you get too kind of jumpy, uh, for want of a better descriptive term, you fall off the log into the river. So, let's go. 3, practice pole fighting. Prepare yourself, student, for pole fighting. I thought I was going to say pole dancing. Again, I really would like some AY goodness. Right, first things first, I'm facing the wrong way. And, obviously, it's got a fantasy element. Well, you kind of knew that from the first stage, because we're fighting a skeleton. Right, hang on. So we got low to the shin. Right, and then we got... He's pummeling me in the nuts. So, he, well, he's a skeleton. He hasn't got any. I guess you could say I'm hitting his bone. Right, and then... Stop. I understand when you play it like this, and obviously I've mentioned where the exploding fist a lot. Oh shit! That's what I meant. A lot in this video, um, mainly because of the way they, they get graphically both very good. But this is more of a obviously a much more um, you know limited and restricted fighting game. But uh, and obviously you know with elements of fantasy practice ball fighting. Maybe this way I'll be facing the right time. I'll be facing the right way. No, I'm not. Right, turn around. I do like the way you kind of. Jump side. Did you see that? There's a log under that comes floating down under the bridge. You can play um, poo sticks if you want. Also, there are ducks in the background. That's a very, very nice touch. Now, it's monochromic, <clears throat> but they have put other colours on the screen. So there are actually four colours. Green, black, white, um, blue. But it does it, so it makes it a colourful game, but it does it in such a way that we don't have attribute clash. I really, really like that. And again, you know, the animation's nice. Haha, ha, it's good to see that it happens to him. Oh look, now I fight my doppelganger. This is probably one of the better looking games on the spectrum. Four years into its life. Again, the limitation of the moves is not wasted on me. If it's not in, you know, if it's not broken. <laughs> I don't know what the actual story is. Uh, I could have read that on Water Spectrum, but I couldn't be asked. 
Um, that's why I'm basing it on not having a 128K version. There was no 128K ROM on World of Spectrum, but that doesn't necessarily mean there wasn't. But, um, you know, yeah, there, there must be an actual story, again, if it's based on the books or not. According to Wikipedia, about Bastion of Truth that never lies. Um, it is. Way! Ooh! There's that fancy element again. Look at the animation on him. It's going to turn him to death. I guess this is the move we use. More than being short. But yeah, this just looks really, really nice. Again, I love all the stuff that's going on in the background. It'd be interesting to see if there's as much stuff going on in the background uh, on the Commodore version. Oh, look, two ducks swimming together. Is that a line from Bingo or something? Why does he keep throwing himself... <laughs> look! He's supposed to be like a drunken master. Oh. See, I'm scared. There you go. To move too much because of slipping off said log. And I don't know what the rules are or how you, you know, trigger slipping off said log. One more go at that, then we jump into sword fighting. But so far, um, not as graphically impressive as the first stage with all the parallax, but I mean, you could argue that the ducks moving in the background is kind of parallax. Um, pole fighting again. Prepare yourself, student, for pole fighting, because it's already loaded in. That's cool. Imagine if you had to reload it every time. Right, skeleton dude again. So why, why I mean, I wonder what the story is. Like, obviously, there's a fancy element. So is it like some bloke has cast a spell on the land and, you know, death and weird short dudes and skeletons and shit? I'm not moving. I'm just going to stay as one with my log. That was awkward. Maybe just a little bit backwards. Can I? Oh, I was going to see if I could get off the log. See you later. Right, let's have a look at sword fighting. But again, not as impressive as the first stage, but still very, very impressive. So, third and final stage. And obviously, if you play the full game, they link into each other. Only you would have to use... Well, not you. You would have to multi-load. So, uh, for practice sword fighting. Press any key. Prepare yourself, student, for sword fighting. I know, I just selected sword fighting. Right, so, say, oh, look at that. That's an owl. That's cool. Same, uh, ooh, look how the background goes up and down. And they've got the Ark of the Covenant in the background. So similar to the first stage, but not only do we have parallax and a lot more going on in the background, look at the way the camera moves up and down. Hey, again, if it works, it works. The more I go through this, the more I am aware that, look at that. That is very impressive. The more I am aware of its limitations as a serious fighting game. Oh, ninja. That is very, very impressive. And again, I like, you know, the fact that we have white clouds, we have blue, we have yellow. And it's done in such a way that the actual characters themselves never experience attribute clash. Go high. Was oh, that blood? <clears throat> I don't know if it is. Might just be the shadow on his chest when I hit him in the face. I do like that there's so much going on in the background. Look at that. Person going about their business with a wheelbarrow. At least we know they've invented the wheel at this point in time. I do like that. Oh, hello. Same character. Samurai? <clears throat> Just that. Do you remember the episode of The Simpsons? Well, I'm just going to do this. And if you so happen to get in my way, that's on you. That's very much my style of combat I'm going to. Oh, apart from turning around and giving him a free shot at my back. But I have to say, I haven't played this for years. And for a Spectrum game, I am uh, very, very impressed at the graphics. Maybe not as impressive as Where the Exploding Fist is such, but then you got to remember that obviously Where the Exploding Fist did not have backgrounds that were this, you know, sort of animated, um, you know, and with all this movement and parallax and stuff. Again, I know it's a different style of fighting game, but yeah. He's killing me. You ink. And words to that effect. How many of them do you fight? Oh, and the dead. How many of them do you fight when you play the actual proper play the whole game mode? 
at the top of that screen. Anyway, that's enough of the Spectrum. I am very, very, very impressed with this graphically. It looks fantastic, particularly stages one and three, but two does have its charms. I am aware it's quite limited as a, a martial arts game, but hey, let's check out, genuinely for the first time, the Commodore 64 version. So here we go with The Way of the Tiger on the Commodore 64. So obviously, again, it's got awesome Sid Chip music. I say that when, again, I mean compared to my other comparison videos. And the Spectrum was just a 48k beeper. Um, so it was never gonna, it was never gonna challenge it in that department anyway. And to be fair, even if it had AY chip music, that probably wouldn't challenge it because I fully accept, as a grown adult, that the SID chip is a thing of beauty. Anyway, if you look at the bottom of the screen, even though we're on the title screen, you can see that it's set up in the same manner: endurance and inner force. And then your wonderful picture of a tiger. You're gonna hear cuts in the music because I am gonna have to use the virtual keyboard to select the keys. But I edit that out because I don't want to take you out of the experience. So anyway, you have the same, you know, way of playing it. Play the whole game. Um, two, practice iron combat. Three, practice pole fighting. Four, practice sword fighting. And this is, well, obviously I'm running on my C64 Mini through emulation. This is a cartridge. By the way, just. I always wanted to put this out there. You know the uh, stupidly failed C64 console, right? I mean, how late that came out and what it's trying to compete against. Why did it even exist when every Commodore 64 had a cartridge port in the back? I don't know, maybe someone knows more about it than I do. So let's get into Unarmed Combat. Genuine, the first time I've played this. Right. Okay, oh dear lord, it's quicker. That's not necessarily a good thing. It's a lot quicker. It's got parallax. Um, fire. There. Up and fire. It's no in-game music. Nice chunky sound effects. Yeah, it, it, it plays kind of better because it's so much quicker. But it also plays pretty much identically, just faster. But, while it has colour and better sound effects... I like the sort of start, more stark contrast of the spectrum. Your ninjas look like they've been through the wash a couple of times and all the colours been removed. Don't know why it's quicker. I'm going to assume that's not an emulation thing because my C64 Mini up to now has run everything. Bang on. Also, how do you do punch? I do have a punch. Turn around. Turn back. Camera one, camera two. So, do you know what? The speed does make it play better. Oh, but also kind of detracts a little bit from it because it's not what I'm used to in the sense that it makes the animation look a little bit goofy, but it's still good animation. Like I said, it's, it's just the wishy-washy nature of the ninjas. I don't like the colour. It does make me think, is this a port of the Spectrum? He's a totally hard ninja. To be fair, he's a ninja, so you would expect. Or hope so. Don't like the colours. Again, call me a Spectrum fanboy. Just don't like the colours. Don't work. Prefer the bright yellow and the, the stark contrast of the blacks and stuff on it. You know, and... I oh, will be interested in the scene of sword fighting. What sort of parallax does it go up and down? In which case... It would be a possibly a port. Or was it a port of the Amstrad? Was the Amstrad a port of the Spectrum? Or vice versa? I don't know. It's crazy. Are we going to fight that little weird cave troll thing, whatever he is? Arco from Slain. And he's going to turn into death. Yeah. Okay. Death's a bit funky. Don't like that. And he's turned back. So there are differences. Maybe it couldn't handle the way death was animated or something, because it did go all squiffy. It's going to turn into death again. Weird. You're going to fly and kick your ass. That seemed to work last time, didn't it? Only I can't get flying kick to work. Turn around. To be fair, the controls, they're all right. They're tight. It's just I'm using... It's god awful joystick. Back off. I'm a scientist, points the quote. Did he just flob at me? Right. I mean, if you look at the bottom of the screen and the health and stuff like that, which I still don't understand, that's what makes me think it's a port.
don't. Oh, that's it, forward. That does that. To the right. He's a hard boss against death, I am aware of that. Come on. I've got to say it again. So far on stage one, I'm a fan of the spectrum. I'm assuming, I mean, I'll look it up afterwards, but that doesn't help the video. That's how death's supposed to look. Oh, back here. Oh, he's back. Weird. So they have mixed things up a bit. I grow weary of trying to fight death because this joystick's given me hand cramps. I'm gonna try just not continuous kicks. I just wanna kill death. There we go. He's dead. That was a very weird way to die, wasn't it? No, he's not. Well, there you go. We get what it's like. I mean, if I beat him, obviously I'd fight myself. Don't like the wishy-washy nature of the colours. I really don't. I know the colours are different in the Commodore 64 when it comes to contrast and stuff like that. But this stage, definitely the spectrum. Let's have a look at stage two. Right, so back to the tile screen and practice pole fighting. Right, let's get into this. Right, so once again, pretty much identical to the Spectrum, not a massive amount of use of color. Better sound effects, uh, you know, over the Spectrum, which makes me think it's a port. But also, again, wishy-washy colors. And whose bright idea was it to make my ninja, you know, kind of pale bluish I know he's not it's monochrome but which I guess you could argue is the fault with every spectrum game um, in front of water or front of a blue background again lack of contrast again must be a poor plays exactly the same again uh, I'll stop saying again in a minute slightly quicker also this ninja likes to move in a bit more Oh, sounds like you're twatting coconuts. I mean, it was gonna have. Hey! I'm the Fonz, apparently. It was gonna have better, you know, chunkier sound effects. Remember that sketch Vic and Bob used to do when they used to fight with fish? Or frying pans, or anything? Do you know what? It is. It's got to be a, a port of the spectrum. I'm saying that a lot, but I'm sure someone can point that out. Let's have one more quick go at pole fighting and then we'll practice sword fighting. I do like that there's background stuff still in this. Is there a log? There's less background stuff though, isn't there? It's just one duck. Oi! It's when you play like this and it gets, you know, this close into each other and like that, you realise there's a complete lack of moves. But again, it's a different type of game than, you know, traditional one on one fire. That makes me so nervous because. Oh! The nature of how you fall off the log was I have no idea, you know, what actually triggers it, but I'm quite prone to doing it. Bit weird that there's no in-game music on the Commodore, but hey, that levels it up in the Spectrum. Sweet, let's have a look. Wait, same one? Did he just pop straight back out? As a skeleton? Because he's dead? I don't know. Never read the books. Right, let's have a look at the final discipline. Right, practice sword fine. This would be interesting to see if it has that, not just parallax, but the way that, like the camera, essentially goes up and down. So number four. Oh dear lord, what a poor choice of, well, not colours, it's that contrast thing again. I do like the very blue, you know, uh, sky with clouds and stuff like that, but could they not have, you know, emphasised the characters 
more against this background. I mean, that's a fault in, during the entire game, but now we're stood in front of a bloody orange desert. It's particularly apparent. I've got, I think that's block. I'll tell you what, though. Is that lack of... This is awful compared to the Spectrum third stage. That lack of up and down movement is missing. This extra speed just means, well, again, the lack of moves. This is just, just stand there and twat. He who twats first and twats longest lives to twat another day, apparently. Right, one more. I want to see if I can move and just see if the whole background moves like it did on the Spectrum. Look at the way through the fence, you can see, and that's kind of impressive. This is it. This is the confines of the screen. This is poor. I'm not saying, you know, it's a fighting game on the spectrum, it's a masterpiece, but the third stage, from a graphical perspective, shit's all over this. Hey, it's not broken again. Is that because he's got a helmet on, or it's not doing any damage? Because that sounds like I am. Right, can't move any further backwards. It's like that episode of Red Dwarf. Time slides. Can't leave the confines of the screen. Can't go any further than that. Do you know what? This is a very poor show, this level. It's, well, mainly in the graphics department, but at least I can round up. Um, bit of a different video, because it's a bit of a different game. It's less fighty and more fantasy than I remember it being such. And obviously, this, the Commodore is obviously a poor, I think, of the Spectrum. With this stage being different, though... Um, the, the colours and the, the lack of bold contrast between your characters and the background, I don't like. I do kind of prefer the fact there's a little bit more speed there. It makes it feel a little bit more kind of, you know, a one-on-one -on -one sort of fighting game. It is a tad sluggish on the Spectrum, but again, call me a Spectrum fanboy, this is a better game, definitely graphically. Again, if it is a port, that's not necessarily its fault, that's lazy programming. But definitely, the better version is the ZX Spectrum version. Anyway, as always, I'd love to know what you think, especially if you played this version back in the day, or you had the Spectrum version. Is it a port? Which do you prefer? Are you like me? Or well, you think the uh, Spectrum is graphically better because of the strong contrast between, you know, uh, the colours and your, your, your character? And as always, I'd love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.